So you see how in order to satisfy our particular region, we concoct all kinds of stories and theories so as to satisfy our own feelings. And in so doing, we create chaos throughout the world. And while we're doing that, we're singing songs to Jesus and we're being holier than thou. The God that we have created, as you can see, is anything but a being we should be comfortable with. Kill everybody, including women and children, and take the little girls for yourself. Nowadays, it would be, take the little boys for yourself. Don't kill anybody, just take the little boys. Show them how to do these things. I was reading a book, and the book was called The Science of God. It's written by Gerald Schroeder, and he raises another very interesting point about the stories in the Bible. Portraying a God that someone obviously created, and he raises this point about Exodus. In Exodus 32, Albert, the Israelites were dancing around a golden calf that they had made out of molten gold. The calf was made by Aaron. And according to the Bible, when God saw this, he was ticked off. And he said, I'm going to rub these people out. And look what he says. He says, they have turned aside quickly. Out of the way which I commanded them, they've made them a molten calf. Now therefore, let me alone. I was telling them, let me alone. That my wrath may grow hot against them, I may consume them, but I'll make you a great nation. Now here is God getting really ticked off about this, Albert. They made a molten calf and worshipping it. Moses is talking to him. This is what Moses said. Now, get this. Moses says to him, why are you losing your temper with these people? Why don't you cool it? Because if you do this, you know, the Egyptians are going to say, you brought them out of the desert just to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth. Stop this stuff and repent of the evil, you naughty God. <laughs> so what happens? And the next one, God repents. I'm a bad God. <laughs> oh, what was I thinking? Do you see how bizarre this is? The naughty God repented. I should have never thought of something like this. So here's the God of the universe, the supreme photon, admitting that he was about to do some bad stuff, and Moses talked him out of it, and he changed his cosmic mind. How is it possible for anyone not to see hidden meanings in it? How can anyone read this literally? And if you want to know how ticked off God got with Moses, take a look at this. And the Lord said to Moses, when you return to Egypt, see that you do all these wonders which I have put in your hand. And it came to pass by the way of the inn that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. You know, you can go on the internet and and there are a million reasons where these preachers try to explain why God wanted to kill Moses. In a tavern, no less. He wanted to meet him at the tavern at the end and kill him. And they say, well, that's because Moses didn't allow his firstborn to be circumcised. This is what's on the internet. Uh, Moses uh, hit the stone twice and God... No, we're talking about God wants to kill this guy in a tavern. I guess he invited Moses out for a drink. Moses didn't know. Moses was suspicious, though. Probably didn't show up. I guess God figured... Uh, he got him on the phone and said, look, you made the uh, golden calf. I'll meet you at the stone pony. <laughs> God was looking for Moses. Can you think, and I'll tell you something, you'll go on the internet from now until doomsday. that there's not one pastor or not one writer who's come up with a logical reason as to why God would want to try to kill Moses. Keep in mind, it was Moses who talked God out of doing something. Think of that. God was going to do something. Moses didn't like it. And God changed his mind. You know what all of these people are doing trying to explain it? They're taking the story literally. That there really is a God. Ooh, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to go to the bar. 
I'm going to meet that guy and I'm going to do him in. You remember what Professor Zev Herzog of the University of Tel Aviv in Israel said? He said this. The many Egyptian documents known to us do not make any reference to the sojourn of the children of Israel in Egypt or the events of the Exodus. Generations tried to locate Mount Sinai, the tribes of Israel. Despite all of this diligent research, not one site was identified that could correspond to the biblical picture. Do you know what he said? Exodus never happened. It never happened. It's all mythology. Do you remember in the story when God was trying to show Moses the power that he had? This was before. You know, God saying to Moses, I want you to I want you to tell him. Moses saying, look, I'm not, I, I can't do this. I'm a, I, I, there's no way I can do this. The guy's got a big place and I, I can't. Moses didn't believe he had any power. So God said this to him. Watch. He said, what has they got in your hand? And he said, a rod. And what is that rod he had in his hand? You control your life by controlling yourself, which is symbolized by the rod, which is the spine. The spine is that which holds you up. The spine is that which you stand on. That is what you control. When you control yourself, it is the spine, the rod, that holds up your physical body. And in Exodus 4.3, God said to him, let go of it. Let go of controlling yourself. Cast it on the ground. And when he cast it on the ground, it became a serpent. When you go into meditation, you're giving up control of your physical body and your physical mind. You're casting it on the ground. And then the energy can flow in a serpentine motion up the spine. It becomes a serpent, the activation of Kundalini or the seven seals. And as soon as you're done with your meditation, what happens? It says in Exodus next year, and the Lord said, pick it up by the tail. And he caught it, and it became a rod again in his hand. In other words, when you're done with your meditation, you're back to the way you were before. Control over everything. But you've got to pick that up. You've got to drop that control. You've got to drop that dependence on the physical and allow that serpentine power of what we call the spiritual to prevail. And there it is. And that's, and that's really what that's about. The story of Exodus. You ready for this? The entire story of Exodus happens in here. In here. In here. It has nothing to do with Egypt. It has nothing to do with crossing the Red Sea. Everything in that story, including Moses, represents the activity within you. That's why the archaeologists never found a thing about the Exodus, because it never happened. It's the same with all the stories in the Bible. They happen in here. So now you can see and you can understand why God sought to kill Moses at the end. Do you remember, and I know you do, remember the Christmas story that says they took Jesus around, find a place where he could be born, but there was no room at the inn. Why? Because the inn is portrayed as a place of business. It's too busy there. There are too many things going on. You have to go out into where the animals are, where nature is, and in the silence of that place is where the child of promise will be born to you. In other words, in your meditation, the inn represents the thoughts of the mind, and you leave the inn and go out to that which is the, 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 the animal, the nature within you where it is quiet and the right side and that's where the child was born. See? When it says that God tried to kill Moses by the end, it means that the higher photon light seeks to shut down the busyness of the human mind when there are higher things to be considered. And so when you come in to meditation, then that light will come and it will shut you down. It will literally kill you so that all that exists within you during that period of meditation is absolute nothingness that you may be filled with the photon light. 
God is trying to get you and me who are Moses to escape from the bondage of the left side and find the way to the promised land, which is the right side. In the story, Moses is so busy trying to figure out everything and God sought to kill his involvement so that he would allow that higher light to flow. He had this to be done, it had to be done in the inn, meaning the place of the busyness of the mind. There's no person by the name of Moses. There was no exodus. It's all in here. And what it's saying, you've got to kill out that person that is the left side for those periods of meditation so you can be strong. So God tries to kill you every time you go into meditation. Oh, you say, what do you mean, kill me? Look at the scriptures. What did the scriptures say in 1 Corinthians? In Jesus Christ our Lord, I die daily. What does it say? I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I. Christ lives in me. In other words, he kills me so that he can live in me. And so God has to kill Moses so that Moses is no longer Moses, but Moses starts to see things in the realm of the higher photon light, not in the realm of the lower left side. So now do you understand why God sought to kill Moses?